Hey viewers, my name is Kara. I'm your host for Tuesdays here on The Pagan Perspective. I'm going to try to record this video outside today. I've been trying for a while, but Tuesdays all of my neighbors seem to want to be outside and making noise, so we'll see how it goes. This week's topic is holiday or special occasion recipes. So, similar to when we talked about, oh, and now it sounds like the ice cream truck. So if you hear music in the background, that's happening as well. <laughs> and I'm wearing a hat and a flannel because it's actually been chilly here the past few days. It's been rainy and stormy and actually kind of cold again. It doesn't even really feel like summer right now. But, there's still the ice cream truck for whatever reason. So, so similar to the video topic that we did a little while ago on traditions that we have for specific holidays or times of year, my recipes and the things that I like to eat or drink tend to be tied to the seasons more than any specific holidays, but I do have some specific holiday things and special occasion things. So, for example, it has become a tradition on my birthday that we get vegan cheesecake because it's kind of a splurge item for our budget uh, you know I, I love cheesecake but I would not eat it all the time anyway and it's also not always available so I tend to just get it on my birthday and then that makes it a very special special occasion thing for my birthday and then we make our own fruit topping to go with it and we would like to also learn how to make our own vegan cheesecake but that usually takes a lot of cashews which are also expensive and we don't have a blender or a food processor or anything like that so it makes it a little difficult so for now we just buy a ready-made one but yeah so that's a special occasion recipe for me we just recently had Lamas or Lunasa here in the Northern Hemisphere, which is celebrated on August 1st, or it was Imolk in the Southern Hemisphere. For um, Lamas or Lunasa, I do tend to call it Lamas because that is the word that means loaf mass. It refers to it being the grain harvest, the first of the three harvest festivals of the year. So because it has to do with the grain harvest and it's actually called loaf mass, baking bread is a big thing that a lot of people like to do. So my partner and I specifically like to make cornbread. We didn't end up being able to do it yet this year because again, not everything is super easy to come by right now. We didn't have quite enough cornmeal or corn flour. I think it's cornmeal that we tend to use. So we haven't made it yet, but we will be making it soon. We've got some time. We'll, we'll still get our cornbread made whenever we get the ingredients to do so. At Samhain, I tend to use recipes for anything that are significant to our ethnic background and the cultures of our ancestors. For me, that usually looks like putting in something Irish and something Italian, something that, you know, things that our, that my family, our family is my partner and my family, is things that they liked to eat. And then similarly with my partner's family, they have a tradition of making dumplings for New Year's. So we have carried on that tradition with a veganized recipe that we can use. It took us a little bit of trial and error to figure out how to do it exactly because my partner had never actually been the one to make them. It was always their mother who did it. So now we've kind of figured it out for ourselves. So that is a tradition that we do on the new calendar year. For me, a big winter tradition is actually beverage related more than food. I like to wait to make myself the first hot chocolate or hot cocoa of the season. I wait until we get the first big snowfall, like the first snowfall that sticks and really makes you feel like, okay, now it's the snowy time. That's when I start making myself hot cocoa or hot chocolate, whatever you like to call it. Uh, I make it myself from scratch as well rather than using a mix because most of those mix have dairy milk powder in them. I don't do dairy. 
So yeah, and then I make hot cocoa all winter long. Oh, uh, similarly to that, another beverage recipe tradition for me is in the autumn, I make spiced coffee for my partner who is a big coffee drinker. And I like to make mulled um, cider, mulled or spiced cider or coffee. Those, those words are somewhat interchangeable. I have also done uh, like a, instead of a mulled wine, I've done mulled pomegranate juice when I stopped drinking wine. And that was pretty darn good. I, I'd only tried it once last year. So maybe this year I'll, I'll try it again and I'll again perfect that recipe over time because pomegranate juice isn't always easy to come by either and it's a little more of an expensive product around here as well. Pomegranates, I love having pomegranates in the autumn as well, um, typically around the equinox and then also at Samhain I have pomegranates. So, you know, it's for me it's not so much recipes as it is like foods that I have at specific times of year or beverages that I make. Cornbread, I think, is one of the only things that I really like make that is a specific recipe. And then another ancestor-related tradition, for me, my grandmother at Easter time, because she was a Catholic, or this would be vernal equinox, spring equinox, or Ostara time for me, um, I just refer to it as the vernal equinox. They're not exactly the same time, of course. Easter is the first Sunday after the full moon, after the equinox. Sometimes they count it if that full moon was on the same day as the equinox. Although typically it does matter if the full moon syzygy was before or after the equinox moment. Um, but the church ultimately makes their own decision on that. So like sometimes Easter is earlier or later than it would normally be based on that formula that it's typically after the first full moon after the equinox. Because if they happen on the same day, then it's kind of like, eh, they kind of get to choose, you know? So, but a tradition for my grandma at Easter was that she would always make a pound cake. She would get the pound cake mix from the store and she has a uh, had she has passed now. She had a, a lamb shaped cake mold. And so she would make a lamb cake every year for Easter and top it with frosting and coconut. And its eyes and nose would be jelly beans and she would line it with you know, chocolate eggs and jelly beans and all kinds of candies and things for us kids. She has since passed away and the lamb cake tin was the mold was given to me because although I am not Catholic and I do not celebrate Easter and I could not eat the cake recipe as my family made it, I was the only one for the past several years who helped my grandmother make said lamb cake. So it got passed to me and I do have a vegan recipe for it that I actually made as the lamb cake for my family one year. It did come out really well, it looked really well, it stood up nicely. Uh, I even made a vegan frosting for it and everything like that. So that's a springtime food related tradition that came from my grandmother. Other than that, I don't think I have any specific recipes for other times of year. In the summer, I like to make iced teas. I, I grow a lot of my own plants that I use for herbal teas. So like I have access to mint, that used to grow on my grandmother's property. I transplanted some for myself when she passed so that I could always have it with me and it's actually doing really well this year. I'm getting a lot of mint. I also have chamomile that originally came from a plant that belonged to my mother that we have kept going. Now my neighbors are cutting wood in their garage. Apologies for the noise again. So chamomile, mint. I also have hibiscus available because my neighbors have a, have a hibiscus, have a hibiscus have a hibiscus and um, it's all it also spreads fairly easily so there's actually some in the small patch of trees um, behind our property there's a little bit of common hibiscus yeah so I like iced teas in the summer hot teas all winter and uh, spiced and mulled coffees and ciders and things like that in the autumn hot cocoa hot chocolate type things in the winter at the second harvest, uh, so the autumnal equinox is the second harvest, 
I think of it more as the fruit harvest. So at that time, that's when I might be making fruit pies or cobblers or just other things with fruit, jams. And then the third harvest is Samhain. So that's when I really, I go for the kind of whatever is significant to my ancestors. Not necessarily just what is seasonal, although I do still with the pomegranates, um, pumpkins, all sorts of other kinds of squash. When we used to live in a little more rural area, we lived in a place that had regular farmer's markets. So we would always go to the farmer's market and see what people had available that was in season. We plan to do a lot of our own gardening, in which case things like that, it'll just be what is seasonal and how can we use that in various recipes to celebrate that, to celebrate what is being given by the earth in that season. But this year, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, sort of changing everything, beginning right in spring, right around the same time that we would have been going out and getting things to get our garden started. We didn't do any of that because we weren't going to the shops. We didn't want to go to the garden shops and things like that because it was sort of right when people were starting to stay at home, be more careful about that and then businesses started shutting down. So I only had the seeds that I already had and some of them did okay. Mostly they didn't though. Most of the things that have come up are things that we didn't even consciously plant. Uh, like right over here in front of me, that is summer squash that just started coming up on its own one day. I didn't plant it there. Also right around the corner behind this bush, you can't see it. There is a very large tomato plant. Uh, it's actually a cherry tomato plant of some kind. I don't know which species because we had a few species last summer that we were growing and we didn't replant anything this year and we didn't plant anything out here. I had it all in pots still because we were mostly growing things from seed. But you know, the bunnies, the birds, the squirrels, somebody must have carried the seed over into the backyard for us and planted it in a bare patch of dirt. Now there is a tomato plant that is doing very well and all the tomatoes are green right now but there are a ton of them. We're gonna have so many tomatoes. So here's the thing. I'm not really a big fan of tomatoes. I don't like the texture of the inside. I don't mind them if they're diced but like cherry tomatoes how you just like pop them in your mouth. I can't do that but my brother loves them and my partner loves them. My mom loves them, you know, so I can't imagine that I'm going to eat a lot of them, but due to the fact that, you know, it's a gift plant, it's not something that we even intended to plant this year, and yet here it's doing so well, I will definitely try to eat some of them. Same with this squash, you know, we didn't intend to plant it right here. Um, there's a lot of edible stuff that, that pops up in our yard. You know, dandelion, uh, I grew up eating dandelion salad because my mom taught my brother and I to just go out into the yard and the fields on my grandmother's property, the clearings in the woods, and just pick all the nice big dandelion leaves. Of course, if you wait until they're too big, they get a little tougher and more bitter, but I actually like that because I'm used to it. I know a lot of people, if you're not used to eating them, it's like really people don't like it at first, but I grew up eating this stuff, right? All the time throughout the spring and summer at when we lived with my mom and at my grandma's house. So I still do that. Um, there's a lot of edible things that just grow in the yard that a lot of people consider them weeds, but they're food. They're gifts from the earth. Again, sorry about the noise from the neighbors. This is what I mean. This happens every Tuesday, but darn it, I wanted to use the daylight to record a video. I didn't want to have to wait till the evening again. So I apologize for that background noise. Oh, and then for other special occasions, my partner was born around Thanksgiving. So sometimes their birthday falls on Thanksgiving. So instead of a birthday cake for them as well, they actually prefer birthday pie. So we make fruit pies and I make a pumpkin pie. Again, these are, you know, veganizing certain recipes takes some trial and error, takes some Googling, finding different websites that have vegan recipes already, and then trying it out and seeing what works for us. So there's been some trial and error, but I have successfully come up with some pretty good recipes that I really like, that my partner really likes, 
and that we have shared with friends and family and that go over really well too. So we do fruit pies and pumpkin pie around Thanksgiving time in the United States, which that's late November because that's also my partner's birthday time. And uh, I already mentioned the cheesecake for my birthday. I also found a yeast-free pizza dough recipe because then you don't have to wait for it to rise. So those times when you're like, man, I really want a pizza, you can just whip it together really quick. And I consider that an ancestor connection as well because my grandmother um, made pizza the same way, you know, from scratch, by hand. It's not a seasonal or a specific holiday or special occasion thing for me, but it's an ancestral connection for me now. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any other special occasion ones. I think that's about it. So those are some of my basic thoughts at this time about my favorite food and drink that I incorporate into my meals and into my rituals and into my symbolism at different sabbats and different seasons, different times of year and different special occasions that are significant to people in my household and in my family. If you'd like to share any of your favorites, in the comments please do so and i will see you next week thank you very much for watching and or listening to this video until next time don't forget to be awesome blessed be and goodbye and again sorry about the noise thank you for your patience